Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books and marketing expert covering Target. Well, Target's diversity, equity, and inclusion officer is telling white women that they need to be more woke in the workplace. They need to fight against systemic racism because we all live in the post-George Floyd world. I know what you're thinking, that Target has other problems than this, that they have massive theft issues they need to deal with. They have problems with their recent boycotts. There are a lot of things going on at Target, but they also have to think about diversity, equity, and inclusion and tell everyone how to live their lives. Let's get into the story. Before we do, please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate you guys. I'm trying to get to 50,000 subscribers, so if you can subscribe, please do subscribe. Coming from the Daily Mail, Target's diversity chief says white women should take action against systemic racism and call out transgressions in the post-George Floyd world. Kiera Fernandez, Target's chief diversity officer, made the comments earlier this year in the context of Target's changing demographic shifts. Fernandez has worked at the retail company for 22 years, and she said one of the hardest things in the world to be every day is black. Target's chief diversity and inclusion officer has suggested that white women should help tackle systemic racism in the workplace by using their voice more. Now, how does this create a more conducive work environment, you might ask? Well, it doesn't create a more conducive work environment, but at least you can fight on the side of people trying to push systemic racism. Vera Fernandez made the comment earlier this year encouraging white women to speak up against transgressions so the woman of color in the room doesn't always have to. So you could do the work for the woman of color in the room. All you have to do is accuse everyone around you of being a racist. She then spoke to a white person on a panel and made the claim that in certain spaces, their voice would be heard differently than her voice. Fernandez said, and that is why we're doing this work. And that is why it's so important to have this conversation. But we also can't ignore the systemic history that got us here and the things that we have to do differently to remove those barriers. Use your voice. Kira Fernandez has been leading Target's Racial Equity Action and Challenge Initiative to accelerate the company's diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts, especially following the death of George Floyd in 2020. The retail giant promised to increase the amount of black employees they have, as well as spend more than $2 million with black-owned brands by 2025. Fernandez, who has worked at the company for 22 years, said in a separate interview, one of the hardest things in the world to be every day is black, one of the hardest things to be in the world every day is a woman. Then in a panel discussion, she was asked what the one thing white women could do to help women of color in the workforce would be. In the clip, which was posted to Twitter, she said, I think the number one thing that I would encourage white women to do is take the diversity, equity, and inclusion learnings and use your voice so that the woman of color in the room doesn't always have to be the woman that calls out the transgression. And join Kiera Fernandez is anti-systemic racist army. Target describes Fernandez as a dedicated diversity advocate who sparks, inspires, and challenges the lens in which we view and practice diversity so we can all grow the circle together with shared accountability and responsibility. This comes after Target has lost more than $14 billion in market capitalization in the span of 14 days since the boycott started at Target. Prior to the boycotts, which stems over an LGBT-geared clothing campaign that touts talk-friendly bathing suits and pro-trans t-shirts for kids, Target shares were trading at $160, giving the company a market value, and the market value is if you were to sell all the shares at the price the stock is currently in the market, you'd get a market value of $74.3 billion. The stock price has not been doing well since the article first came out. The stock is now down to $134.86. It can go up a little bit. It can go down a little bit day by day. But the market capitalization is stuck now at $62.2 billion, down today around $12 billion from where it was at before the boycotts began. Almost makes you think that mixing politics and business is probably not a good idea because you wind up isolating people from your business if they don't agree with all of your politics. Target actually has real problems to worry about without trying to change the culture on a person-by-person -person basis. They have a theft of $1.3 billion from organized crime in their stores. There are gangs going in 
and they have a business of stealing merchandise out of Target and out of other stores and then selling it on the streets or selling it online. They make a lot of money that way. And because of the laws, especially in Democrat run cities, you can't stop these people from stealing. In New York City, this is how bad it is in New York City. Shoplifting in New York City is so bad, supermarkets are locking up and installing anti-theft devices on $6 ice cream. Now, $6 is kind of a lot for ice cream, you would think too, but to steal it is not gonna make it any cheaper for the rest of us that actually go and pay for it. Well, this is the age we live in now. It really makes you wonder when you see all of the Pride Month promotion merchandise, that Target's doing with their tuck-friendly bathing suits and the other t-shirts that are pro-trans t-shirts. I thought this was really interesting. This popped up on Reddit from somebody in the trans medical group, Target Pride section. Here's what they said. You would have to kill me before I went out wearing this shirt. The shirt says trans people will always exist. I don't wanna make me being trans a quote, cool trait and wear a colorful shirt telling the world that I'm trans. I get microaggressions constantly and I'm terrified of being hate crimes. Everyone that I have ever told that I'm trans since I started passing has treated me differently and not in a good way. I'll be surprised if I see anyone wearing this shirt. So at the point where people are trans and they're seeing this merchandise and they're saying, well, why would I wanna advertise I was trans? I'm trying to pass as a biological male or a biological female. It's a pretty good question. Why is Target bothering with this merchandise in the first place who is it really for? And why would they really be pushing this racial agenda inside of Target? This person seems like a nice enough person. She's worked at Target for a long time. She started in human resources at Target years ago. She got the title of vice president. You know, that's a good accomplishment. 22 years at a company, especially now, is great. So why get into this political, social mess, especially if you wind up destroying the stock price and producing merchandise that nobody wants. Aside from this causing all the controversy, and aside from this causing customers to be uncomfortable when they're shopping in the store, they're producing all this merchandise that can't actually be sold because no one actually seems to want to buy it, so it's got to be destroyed, and they lose even more money. What Target has forgotten about is the concept of a Target market, trying to figure out who your customer actually is. And this is a very simple, straightforward marketing concept. A target market is a specific group of people with shared characteristics that a business markets its products or services to. Companies use target markets to thoroughly understand their potential customers and craft marketing strategies that help them meet their business and marketing objectives. What is an example of a target market? For example, a children's toy maker may have boys aged nine to 11 as the target market. Yes, boys, are a gender and they do exist. And the boy's parents as the target audience. It may also be defined as the consumer segment most likely to be influenced by an advertising campaign. The target market is also distinct from the buyer's persona. You would actually go and you would select products that you know that your customers would want. That would be kind of the whole idea of figuring out what merchandise should we have in our stores because we want people to actually buy it. This is coming from Forbes. This is a reasonable, straightforward article that says what to do when a marketplace turns into a political battle zone. And they cover well, like there's a particular section here. First of all, the strategy of deciding what matters, like what's actually important to your company, because you may have to pay a price for pushing this in your stores. Second, the culture of your customers. Stay close to your customers. Knowing what's strategically important won't protect the company from a ham-fisted execution. Broad mandates have to get translated into thousands of nuanced decisions that can't all get reviewed by top management. Instead, leaders need to ensure that their teams have a deep intuition for the people they seek to serve. They need to be empathic and have a connection to their customers. This kind of customer centricity has to go beyond great surveys. It requires a kind of cultural alignment between the employees and customers that is increasingly at risk. In the case of Target, guests have been used to seeing t-shirts with rainbows on them during Pride Month, but many guests were surprised to find tuck-friendly bathing suits in the collection. Target was subsequently the victim of a social media backlash that was chock full of false claims, including that the bathing suits were for kids. They weren't for kids, that's true. Many Target guests had problems with the trans-friendly clothing. For them, it was a bridge too far, and understanding where that line is for customers 
makes the difference between graceful and sloppy execution. It all comes backwards from what your customers are comfortable with and what your customers want. You can't produce merchandise that your customers don't want because it helps to push a social agenda. It's the same thing with going and telling white women, you need to be an army fighting for this social justice agenda. No, you don't. What you need to do is keep after your own interests, respect the people that you deal with, and if you're trying to sell people something, understand who you're trying to sell something to, what they're interested in. And if you make a mistake and you push things too far or you misunderstand what people want, you have to apologize for it. Target has still not apologized for offending millions of their customers. And until they do, they're going to have lost a lot of business. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Always love to see your ideas. Do you think Target should be telling white women in the workplace to go and push their political agenda? Or do you think maybe they should not be doing that? Please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up and I'll see you again soon with another video. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.